this week, uh, sports fans around the world have been criticizing former NFL quarterback Tim Tebow on his passionate views on the Fair Pay to Play Act that was passed this Wednesday in California. Now, I have so many mixed emotions about this. Um, as a former Division One athlete in college, I mean, I think that, yes, a scholarship can change the trajectory of your life and your family, as it did for mine. Um, so for him to kind of uh, make comments that playing, you know, paying college athletes turn it into turns it into a professional game, I kind of disagree. I think you should absolutely, absolutely get paid for your likeness. Um, so that part of it is insane to me. So what do you guys think of it? So I agree. I've always said that the the kids should get paid. Right. I, I'm a firm believer the NCAA masquerades itself as this nonprofit organization. Meanwhile, they're taking billions of dollars, whether it's through contracts with networks, like we see with ESPN, CBS, NBC. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they sell paid sponsorships throughout all their, all of their arenas, their right. stadiums. Um, but on the flip side, I, I, I guess I kind of understand where Tim Tebow was coming from. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy who, I think he's gotten a lot of bad backlash for this. He didn't come from like wealthy beginnings. He yeah. came from a stable home. Yeah. Um, his parents were, were big on the church, and he did a lot of missionary work growing up. But to make it seem like, oh, he was some rich boy or kid who's telling everybody, no, you shouldn't get paid, that's not what he was saying. The, the overall you know, premise of what he's saying was, hey, look, when I was in college, I was a major D1 athlete. I was a star in D1. Yeah. But I did it for the love of the game. I never went out there on the field assuming that someone needed to pay me to play college sports. Right. All right? The slippery slope we deal with with paying college athletes is, where does it trickle down to next? Because a lot of people forget that all the millions of dollars that get pumped into the pro game now weren't always there. Mm -hmm. There was a time where pro athletes actually had to have a second job during the offseason mm -hmm. to be able to support their families. Right. The moment that all of this money started coming into the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, it slowly trickled down to the college game. And we right. started seeing guys get paid under the table because NCAA started to realize there's major money in this. Mm -hmm. And so everyone slowly got their little bit. Once the NCAA starts to pay the college athletes, where does it stop? Will we see it trickle down further down to the AAU level? Will we see a lot of kids who travel the world now who are high schoolers who are playing in all these extravagant tournaments for Nike, for Adidas, yeah. for Under Armour? It's life changing. Right. They don't get paid for any of that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're traveling cross country every weekend to play in these major tournaments. Right. Yeah. So if we start paying the college athletes, which I do think they, there's got to be some way that we figure out that pay scale. Mm -hmm. But we just can't outright say, hey, you guys should get this for, play for playing college ball. Because if we say that, then where does it stop? Yeah. No, all right. Now, I, I, you know, I agree with, the, with, with you on the first half of that, that Eric. Um, but with, as far as Tim Tebow goes, because, mm -hmm. yeah, I know he did grow up in the church. He was doing his uh, philanthropy work. Right. However, he does have the complexion for the protection, Period. which kind of still sets him aside from every minority athlete mm -hmm. that's playing college sports. So, so as a... He can go into probably any office across the country, and okay. if you if if it's a choice between him and let's say Richard Sherman, who's walking in there right. and, and with dreads, who 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 they who they taking first? More than likely, more Tim than Tebow, likely, absolutely, it's gonna be Tim Tebow. We saw how to go back to Richard Sherman when uh when he when he was just had all of the adrenaline rush after that game and he was just shouting and and then they they labeled him a thug, yeah, not realizing that this is a man that that went to an Ivy League mm -hmm. uh, school. Right. Which I he went to college, Stanford. Yeah, he went, went to Stanford. Stanford, you know. So, but but he was a thug because he was loud and expressive. So you know, we even though yeah, even though Tim Tebow per se might not have come from you know been grew up rich or whatever, but again, he still like I said, he got right. the complexion for the protection. Right, absolutely. And so I I agree with what you're saying there too, and I think the reality of it is the majority of these players are minorities, right? Mm -hmm. The majority of the owners, coaches, and mm -hmm. colleges are white owned. A lot of these white um, owners cannot relate to a lot of these minorities and the backgrounds that they come from. So it's very easy for um, those in those positions to say yes, they shouldn't be paid. Um, I mean, again, I'll speak from my own personal experience. I ran track um, at Towson University. Now for me, I remember you know, having to bartend till two o'clock in the morning causing me to um, be late sometimes to 5 a.m. lift, to sleep in, to miss practice, to miss class. And me having to come up with the financial uh, means on the weekends when the cafeteria closed was something not covered from my scholarship. You know what I mean? And I think I had guys, football players in my school um, that did well, Terrence West, 
Monte Goddess who had to send their refund check back home to their parents to put lights on because they're from Detroit and from, you know, East Baltimore. Tough so city, yeah. I think it's just, it's hard, you know, because you, you have to finance yourself through college. Um, and I and to your point of, of the college is not paying, I do agree that it becomes a slippery slope. Like, how do you scale it, right? right? But getting paid for your likeness is something that, it's completely different here. Right. And I think that's yeah. ultimately where they're going to go with it. I think they're going to start allowing players because we've yeah. seen a lot of transitional stars, right? The, the Zion Williams, right? Tebow was a major star. We know what Johnny Manziel, how he appeared to be as a, as a college yeah. quarterback. So I think they're going to start allowing guys to be able to make money, whether it's through autograph signings or appearances. But the, the tough part about all this, and, and to just backtrack, the Tim Tebow thing, Tebow never made it about race, or he never said everyone should just shut up and play. His point was, I was a major D1 star, I, yeah. and I never once thought about it from the standpoint of, I should be paid because I'm a major D1 star. Mm -hmm. He looked at it as, I really love playing football, and I get the, the privilege to do it at a major university. Yeah. So is everyone going to share that same sentiment? No, absolutely not. Like you said, there's, there's some kids coming from really rough backgrounds who need that check. Yeah. But... The NCAA just can't start signing checks for everybody, right. right? Because then not only where does it trickle down to, as I mentioned earlier, about possibly AAU and, and major high school stars, right? Because right. at some point, well, if you're, I mean, it's if you're already there. Right. We, yeah. we see them get it, but then it becomes worse because once you open up that floodgate, now it's not just exclusive to the top 15 prep stars. Right. It becomes the top 50 prep stars now want a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, well, I mean, you can't, I'm sorry, but you can't kind of differentiate because if, if we, the cutoff is 18. We would say you have to be enrolled in college as far as as a student athlete being paid. If we're talking we'd NCAA to, athletes, right. absolutely, yeah, yes. and that's it. We'd have to make the cut right. there. Yeah, right. But my thing is, once you open it up, I'm not saying it would trickle down to the AAU level right it away. Probably will, though. No, it won't, because, because we're seeing it now. It's already getting kickbacks. Right, but it, it took it's it's yeah. taken a while for it to get to this point for the NCAA. Right. Pro sports been making millions and millions oh, of dollars for yeah. years. Yeah. And now we're even though this narrative is being pushed for a while, we're finally starting to see some action behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, we've got to come to a, uh, an area where it's like, all right, this makes sense for everybody. Yeah. Because how do you differentiate then between the basketball player who goes to um, North Carolina compared yep. to the track star who's running at a small school in Texas, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's got needs. Everyone's yeah. got bills. Right. So is it fair to say because you go to a bigger university, you should get X amount, but because you run at a smaller school or you play a school that's not as popular, you should get nothing? Well, I think yeah. to your point, so it's, we're talking about two separate things, though, here. Like the school paying you, and you using your own name and your likeness to get mm -hmm. paid is two separate things. Right, correct. So, yes, if you go to a Duke or a UConn um, and your likeness is very popular and you're getting these accolades, then, yes, you should be able to sell a shirt with your back and your name on it and get that money. Why is that going to other places and you're not even getting a, any percentage of it? That's I, very different every, from the school cutting right, you a check. But the pay for play isn't just about likeness. This is about actually setting up a salary scale right. yeah. for all college athletes, college athletes across the board. Mm -hmm. So this isn't just saying, all right, we're giving you the free reign to go now and make basically market name. yourself and, yeah. and make, it, make yeah. a name for yourself. Because if you're a football player, right, for example, a lot of people didn't know who Patrick Mahomes was in college. Yeah. Even though he was a five-star yeah. quarterback recruit. True. Right? Yeah. When you play a sport like football where you have a helmet on yeah. for the majority Nobody of the time, you. no one knows who you Especially are. Especially not in college. So how do I get paid off my likeness? Basketball players have the best advantage right. yeah. for that. I always right. They got that. the advantage. Mm -hmm. Right. They have yeah. the advantage. Now, on the flip side of that, no one ever talks about this, baseball players have a huge advantage because baseball players actually get to enter the draft multiple times. Yeah. You can enter the draft out of high school and be like, I was in the seventh round. That's not good enough for me. So now I'm still going to take this scholarship. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to now boost up my stock and enter the draft again in another year or two. Yeah. So you're still getting the best of both worlds where you can actually... Kyler Murray. Per, Kyler Murray was drafted into Major League Baseball, mm -hmm. yeah. was still getting a full ride at Oklahoma, yeah. and was able to now push that to be the number one pick in the draft. Right, yeah. and, and that's not to... I don't by any means want to skate, skate over the fact that you are getting an education paid for. Absolutely. But even that is scaled differently. Like, I also did not get... 100% of my scholarship from athletics. Some of it was academic as well. But there was girls on my team that were full rides. Then you get partial. Then you get people who get $1,000. So then it's, it turns into, okay, well, there are some people who are, are reaping the benefits uh, academically from getting their degree. And then there's some people who are getting like a partial or, or basically damn near a quarter scholarship. So yeah. how do you, it, it does become tricky. How do you even scale that? Because some people are here getting a full. So it, it's just really tricky. Um, 
uh, wide receiver, Torrey Smith, who just uh, retired this week, he made some comments on it, and he spoke about his own personal journey and not being able to, you know, uh, get food, being hungry on the weekend when the cafeteria closed. So, I mean, I think that it's a lot to think about, and if they really fine-tune fine -tune the bill, then it could work. So. Absolutely. They, that's going to be the tricky part. Well, we, uh, we got to uh, 2023 to when it's really supposed to start taking effect. So I guess they'll be taking these next couple of years to kind of work out all of the kinks and just figure out. But, I mean, again, with the, as far as, like, the merchandise goes, those are the, the kind of the easiest things. But right. then you only have – that's only going to be with basketball, football, right. and baseball because there's no college – Track, uh, track or, video games or anything like yeah. that. I'm if, if you're, if you're, like I said, if you're a swimmer, yeah, like, then how, how am I? Yeah, like, that. yeah, I don't know how, how that, how that, how that works. I'm hungry too. Like, what about yeah, me? Can I, can, can I get I'm a little something? Like, out to but listen, this is the era of being entrepreneur. So college athletes, look, if this bill passes, don't wait in your school. Write a book about your journey. Sell some yeah. shirts. Make some headbands. Mm -hmm. Like, be an entrepreneur because everyone else is getting paid off of it. So, yeah. and for the guy, for the top guys. You bet. You bet. You should be making millions before you even touch the oh, yeah. league, because if you if you got somebody like Zion whose name was just crazy yeah. coming into into college, I could have made make so much yeah. money. And and you know what? This makes me think about the fact that uh, some minority athletes definitely need to check out an HBCU and start funding money back into our black universities and colleges mm -hmm. because all of this money that these predominantly mm -hmm. PWIs are making. Off brown faces is something that I've always been uncomfortable with. So I think that HBCUs definitely need to kind of get in this recruiting circuit a little bit more and get these top players. Yeah, That's a whole nother debate. Yeah, I mean, but it but is, it's, it's This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.